Hey guys and girls, welcome to the video, and we'll get onto the wiring bit in a second, but I'm not one for leaving people in suspense, so I wanna show you what's underneath this cover. If you've seen it before, I've got the RB26 covers that have been modified to fit an RB25, and uh, well, I'll, I'll let the picture show you. I've had them powder coated and I've got this new cover plate for it as well. And well, it just absolutely transforms the engine though. Doesn't make it run, but looks cool as. So uh, I'm real, real chuffed with that. It's a really good uh, look. So I went with the classic red because well, this is kind of a classic car nowadays, I suppose. Um, and it's gonna keep in with like a nice, just OE Nissan kind of theme with a OE plus feel to it. The reason we're talking about it in this video because we're gonna talk about what's underneath here. That's probably the reason why you clicked onto this. And that is how to wire in newer, better coil packs for your vehicle. So original RB25 coil packs, I mean, there was a point where they were just ridiculously expensive and going all the time. Any original ones are gonna be 25 years old now and they are prone to breaking down. So, so the best thing to do is upgrade to a newer coil pack. There's quite a few options out there, some of which um, you need different ECUs for, like the um, R35 ones, some of which you don't. Now we're running this on a Link G4X anyway, um, but the coil pack conversion that we're doing doesn't require you to have an aftermarket ECU. So we're gonna put in the short VAG ones. These are out of the Golf petrol 1.4 engines. And um, the reason we're going for that over the R8 is because they fit under the coil pack cover. And well, I've just spent a load of money to make the coil pack cover look nice, so I want that. <laughs> um, and also for the sort of power we're going for, it will be absolutely fine. You know, if we were pushing for 500 horsepower or plus, then I would probably switch to the R8 ones. So I'm hoping if you clicked on this video that you're looking at making your own, and you've probably already looked on the forums and found out that they're useless because all the pictures have disappeared and there's no information on there. Um, as, as the guys from Mighty Car Mods would say, they belong in the bin. Well, and that's what I found. Uh, I did manage to find after a couple of hours of searching a couple of little snippets of stuff that was really helpful. So first of all is that R8 coils and VAG short coils have different pinouts. I will put them up on the screen here, so just pause it if you're gonna do the, um, if you're doing the conversion yourself so you can see which ones are which. And I'll show you what I've done on mine because they are the short VAG ones. Out of the four wires that go to it, they have the same four wires, they're just in a different configuration on the coil pack. So that's where the difference is. Um, also on this, I'm gonna do something a bit different with the engine loom, is I'm not gonna use the OE plug because I thought, well, it's an old plug, why still use it? So I bought a plug to go on the end of it specifically to change over because we're gonna be changing so much on the wiring doing the conversion anyway, so why not? So here is our VAG coil, we're going with NGK. Um, there are cheaper options out there, but to be honest, I just want to go with a reputable brand uh, on this. It's quite an important part of the ignition system and uh, you don't want to get it wrong. So this is the part number here, which I'll put all the details for what I've used in the description down below. But like you can see, we can pop that straight onto the spark plug there and still have room for our cover to fit in place. So these are the parts I've used. We've got our coil pack. We've got our wiring, so I've got some thicker gauge wiring here for the main ignition live and the main ignition earth. And then we've got a thinner one for the trigger. So this is the earth trigger, and this is the trigger sensor wire to tell it which one to switch on and off. When the signal goes down this, and earth's on that, then the big pulse goes down this, and earth's on that. Nice and simple, that's our four pins there. We've then got our connectors which match up to our coil pack with a, a seal in there and a wiring boot that goes on the end here. And when we put all of that together, we end up with something like this. So this has got a protective boot on, but as you can see, if I pop that off, that we've then got our one, two, three, four outputs, the same as what we've got on the diagram we used with our main earth, our trigger earth, our main live, and our trigger live. Remember, 
This is for the short coil. The long coil, which generally is red on the top, the R8 one, that's a different way around. So now I've repeated that six times for the six different spark plugs with different length leads on each one. Uh, it's time to put them into the car and cable tie it together so we know exactly how the loom wants to sit. Okay, so after a bit of cable tie and wizardry, we've got everything sat in place of where roughly where it's gonna sit. Um, the coil packs, because of the way these pigtail leads are, just need to sit ever so slightly to an angle, but that's absolutely fine, no issue there. So what I've done is I've cable tied all the individual wiring for the coil pack all the way along, and I've left the tails on the cable ties of where the heat shielding needs to go, because it's obviously all gonna be covered in a, in a nice uh, covering. When we get to the back here, nice and simple, all the big lives go to one connection off of the loom. All of the triggers go into the multi-plug, which tells it which one to, to fire on and off. And the earths go to each other and earth to the back of the head here. So we'll put some ring terminals on those so they can earth nicely. <sighs> Nearly lost you. You tried to escape. Um, so <laughs> So I'm gonna head back home where it's nice and warm and dry and there's food and get all these uh, heat shielded up. Right, time to make this look a lot neater and I'm just using this shielding stuff, this wire shielding and some heat shrink and then we'll cover all these. Obviously it's gotta be done in quite a precise way so that each one has its individual pigtail poking out in the right place but the rest of it is still covered. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll look at how we're gonna work out which trigger wire is which on the RB loom. So on your RB loom, this is what your plugs are gonna look like. You've got this igniter block here, which we're not gonna use, that's gonna come out, and you've got a plug each side. Now this one's got seven connectors on it, and this one's only got six. The reason that's got seven is because the middle one there is an earth, uh, and that's not for earthing the coal packs, that is just for earthing the igniter block here. So what we're gonna use is effectively this bit here to find out which of these wires, to find out which of these wires, should I say, goes to each of these coil packs. The other plug here is the live, and that is where our other connection is gonna go, so onto there, and then there's like a very thin little earth to block here, um, which we'll worry about because we've done a better one of those already. So I'm gonna unplug this, grab the multimeter, and figure out what goes where. Well, actually, if I'd looked a bit closer, I'd have seen that it's already marked on here exactly what goes where, so that makes it really, really simple. So you can see, got one, two, three, ground, four, five, six. So that relates to these wires here. And then E, which would be to igniter or, or coil, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Nice. Okay, so that's our loom all sealed up and we've got the plugs on both the engine wire and loom side and the um, coal pack side. The only thing I haven't done is put the live plug on purely because the one I bought was just Wow. The connectors were just a bit wussy really, they just weren't really uh, thick enough for it. Um, so I want to get a beefier connector for that and then that will all be done up. So the next thing to do is just to pop it into the car and make sure everything fits up in the place that we hoped it would. And there we have our finished loom all wrapped up looking nice and uh, ready to go on the car. All I have to do is finish the rest of this engine build and then we will be ready to uh, fire it up. So, you know, give it six months, it'll be ready. Um, thank you very much for watching guys and I'm gonna put at the end of this video a screenshot of all of the helpful um, pinouts that I used to do this. And if this video helped you out to make your own loom, please do hit the like button and think about subscribing because we've got plenty more to do on this car. Plenty more to do on this car, more to do on the R34, and more to do on the new car that's coming as well. So uh, I'm really looking forward to showing you guys that. But guys, one last thing, and that is uh, something that's apparent to me from having a lot of time off at the minute and, and spending time with my family, is that, uh, is that you can go out and buy the car parts you want, and that's fine, but they will only make you happy for a small amount of time. Whereas if you build it, you can look back on it and reflect it. And, and see it every time and think about the time that you built that product and, and the fact that it's still working, fingers crossed. Um, so yeah, it's a, you know, you can't buy happiness. You can buy temporary happiness, but if you want to be permanent, you've got to build it.
everybody thanks for watching and if you like what you saw check out one of these videos for more on this build see you soon